Um, all right, guys, we have not talked about WeWork much in, I, I want to say ages. Like this, one of the biggest risk on bets of all time. It's a juice we, we cleanse. We did cleanse. Yeah. yeah. It was an Adam Newman cleanse. Uh, it's back a little bit. Danny, can you give us just the, the briefest thumbnail on, on the IPO return and the possibility of, quote, profit from WeWork? Um, I, well, I think you've summarized it. I mean, the CEO of WeWork came out uh, this week and said that um, they're targeting profitability next year and therefore targeting an IPO again. Um, and it was one of these wonderful things where it's like, I think this is year 10 of targeting profitability for WeWork. Um, uh, to be fair, it was profitable, I think, for one year back in like, what, 2013 or something like this. There's a little note. Um, you know, what, what's fascinating to me is to come out, I, I think they're trying to counter this narrative because, you know, two weeks ago there was Billion Dollar Loser was, was published, which is the story of WeWork, um, a good book. Uh, and uh, I, I think they want to remind people that like they can be profitable. Um, you know, of course, this is in the future. Uh, we have no idea if anyone's going to an office next year. It's it's actually one of these stories that I, I read and I was like, why are you even trying to give this narrative right now? Like the only way to actually give this narrative is with actual proof, actual evidence, actual revenues, actual facts, like make the argument. Otherwise, um, put up or shut up, I think is the term we use uh, in journalism. And, and that's my view when we work. And I'll use my favorite factoid from Billion Dollar Loser to transition us into the next section, which is apparently... Adam Newman was able to convince SoftBank to invest $3 billion in just 30, 30 minutes in WeWork. And I think that is absurd. When, when, I, when I do consulting, I always bill $100 million a minute. Um, I, that's I think what that's I was going to say. Ah, you stole I my math I beat you to fact. the punch, Alex. I beat you to the punch. <laughs> this is why I need to be ruder on the show and not let Danny take it when I want to talk next. Because I was going to say $100 million a minute because we knew that the Vision Fund deployed $100 million a day during its life. And Danny did that math back. Uh, with Armand back that in the day. That was a fun one. That was a, that fun, was a one. fun one. That means they had 30 days of funding back into 30 minutes. What did they do the other 29 days? They just hang around? <laughs> I would take a nap, frankly. I, I think there was like literally monkeys with like darts throwing things and they're like 100 million, whoever hits, you know, the logo. Um, but look, SoftBank was also in the news, Alex. So so their earnings, were, I think, were what, Monday Japanese time. Uh, what happened there? Yes, SoftBank is in the news because they had a much better couple of quarters. Um, if you recall back to the kind of April time frame. When SoftBank dropped its fiscal 2019 numbers, which is kind of the year that ends March 31 for them, strange calendar, uh, they had a lot of pain in their results because a lot of the Vision Fund bets just weren't doing that well. There was a lot of carnage and a lot of doubt about Masayoshi Son, uh, the kind of head of SoftBank Group and all of its efforts, and open questions about what the future of Vision Fund 1's returns were going to be. Now, six months later, we're looking at the results for the time period ending September 30th, and the results are much better. Um, some of their exited companies saw a lot of value gains as public stocks. Uh, they saw a lot of value gains in their private companies. And uh, the Vision Fund appears to be kind of back in the black. It's positive. It's making returns. Now, it hasn't put up a bonkers level of uh, of IRR, Danny, but certainly it's it's not been a catastrophe. And I think when you go back to the early days of the WeWork story, when uh, the WeWork IPO story, sorry, when that IPO was in trouble, when that IPO got pulled, when the valuation of the company got got hit, everyone thought that the Vision Fund was just kind of screwed. Because how could it take a loss that large and still be standing? Uh, but it turns out that things are going medium at the Vision Fund, which is a huge improvement from catastrophe, which is what it looked like before. So I'm not saying it's going great, but certainly it's doing um, better than, than I anticipated. You know, I, I was pleasantly surprised by the news. I, I, I think, you know, the last year has been total retrenchment for, for SoftBank, right? And I, I, you know, if you look at Masayoshi Son over the last, you know, two decades, right? At one point, he was the richest person in the world. Um, had a, one of the he, he he's lost I think the most money of any single human in the history of the planet. Um, you know, losing almost a hundred billion dollars, and um, you know I think the Vision Fund was like his comeback story. Um, it ran into a huge amount of trouble, lots of debt, and then you know SoftBank has gone through like total retrenchment. Right, it sold off Sprint and merged it with T-Mobile. It is selling off its ARM uh, division into um, Nvidia. It's going through regulatory approvals now. It's rejiggered the Vision Fund, which apparently is moving to Abu Dhabi, according to reports in the Financial Times and elsewhere, um, you know, step by step. Um, they're also, I mean, not that we care about Japanese telecoms, but like the core of SoftBank is a telco and it is rejiggering it in new competition with some new entrants into the Japanese telco market. So like, I, I, it's just a rebuilding year. You know, it's, it's like any kind of sports metaphor. This is, it's just not a good year for SoftBank and you're just rebuilding the team um, the other news that came out of this week's uh, announcement was that Rajiv Mishra, who is the head of the Vision Fund, is off the board of SoftBank. And uh, uh, Marcelo Kler, who's a longtime lieutenant for uh, Masayoshi-san, um, who, who ran Sprint, 
um, is also off the board. Um, and so, you know, there's a, a corporate governance change. Elliot has kind of come in. I don't think Elliot is like influential to actually make these decisions, but the fact that they're basically going along with uh, uh, Elliot's plan, I, I think is like a cooperative deal. Well, guys, listen, we have to stop there. We're a little bit over time, but uh, it, generally speaking, we talk about risk in the VC market. It seems to be more risk on than risk off, but with a little bit of fear in the post pen, post vaccine era. Uh, so we'll see what happens next, but we are back Monday morning, unless someone files to go public tomorrow. But uh, if that doesn't happen, we'll talk to you guys after the weekend. Bye.